Hi my loves, I'm Anita Manager and welcome back to another episode of Sip and Simmer. We all may have our concerns and worries in life, but during the next 30 minutes, we are here to have a drink, a snack, and a good time. Now, before I tell you what we're making this episode, we did a quick little uh, question on my Facebook before we came live, and I posted a picture of everything that was ready for our cook tonight, and I asked if anybody knew what the answer was, and the first person in the chat room, because that's what I'm going to call it, that answers it correctly, gets a free Anita Manager t-shirt. I will get my name right one of these days. So, drum roll, and our winner is Ellen Hart. Congratulations, my love. I'm really excited for you to get your t-shirt. Make sure that after the show, you send me a private message with your address and I will ship it out to you tomorrow. Now, to get back to things. Tonight we will be making um, a Cornish pastry and an Excelsior cocktail. If you would like to contribute to the production of Sip and Simmer, my Venmo is Mrs. Anita Manager and all the proceeds do go to making the drinks and the snacks we make here together. Now, tonight we have Miss Sienna Rose joining us again, but before we go on, I have another special request and need a minute. Tonight I want to talk about essential workers and how we treat them. The reality is that essential workers are in the midst, at, in the midst of the coronavirus crisis, are fast food workers, social workers, cleaners, uh, realist, retail associates, transit workers, home health aides, and the list is longer than I would have imagined. They're often not highly paid individuals and they're quite literally risking their lives for us every day. <clears throat> Whether you're, you are deemed essential depends on where you live. In Arizona, the governor deemed golf courses essential and I can only assume what their favorite pastime is. Unfortunately, in Pennsylvania, liquor stores were shut down as non-essential. Thankfully, in Connecticut, they were not. Guidelines to whether construction workers are essential vary from state to state. And let's not forget everyone who is considered essential doesn't necessarily want to be. There is a federal guidance laying out parameters around the essential workforce, but for many people, whether they're expected to go into work and what sort of protections they'll get all depends on the governor's and the company's boss. The coronavirus crisis has exposed many ugly truths about America. <sighs> a lot. How under-recognized and underappreciated essential workers really are not just during the pandemic, but always. One of the lines that has become common around essential workers is that they're allowing those of us who have the privilege of staying home uh, and keeping the economy going while health crisis unfolds. But essential workers are really care workers in every sense of the word. But every essential worker who isn't directly working in care functions are still doing just that. They're still caring for us. In a global pandemic, cars will still break down, trash still needs to get picked up, and people in general still need help. The workers who are taking care of the rest of the country are putting their lives on the line, and some of them are dying. In New York City, currently the epicenter of the United States coronavirus, dozens of transit workers, doormen, janitors, and healthcare workers have all died from the disease. Millions of essential workers are under extreme levels of stress right now, and the uncertainty and anxiety anxiety seem unbearable. And sure, everybody is being nice to them now, but what happens when this ends? Who's to say that people won't go back to treating them like a piece of furniture? Let's all show some love and respect for the essential workers, not just now during the pandemic, but from here on out. Let's show them some respect. Let's give them the respect that they deserve and find a way to pay them the wage that they deserve and a living wage on top of that. Now, Everybody, when you're out, remember, it doesn't hurt to smile at people who are still working and helping us get the things that we need. They may not be able to see your mouth, but they can see your eyes squint and they can feel the love. All right? So, before we invite Sienna on, tonight we're going to be making an Excelsior beverage. It sounds delicious because I love some rum. So, I have my shaker. I've got glasses for two. And here is my mixins. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour everything into the shaker, pour it into the glasses, and then top it off with uh, ginger ale. So, I've got two ounces of rum, a little bit extra. 
texture rum. I've got an ounce and a half, uh, I'm sorry, half an ounce of peach schnapps, and I've got half an ounce of fresh lime juice. Now I'm going to shake that up, and then I'm just going to top it off with the ginger ale. I'm curious as to how many people are paying attention to the posts before the show, and if you're seeing the Kathy's Corner post, and if any of you are making the drinks along with me. With the posts every day that I post in the groups and on my Facebook page, I'm posting the list of ingredients that you're going to need, not necessarily how much, so that way you tune in and pay attention, but um, I have been doing it for a little while now, and a big shout out to Kathleen Brown, who usually is watching, for suggesting it, so that way we can all have this beautiful beverage together. I'm all tongue-tied tonight. All right, so I'm gonna pour this out for us. And then I'm just going to get my ginger ale and just top off the glass. You really don't wanna use much more than a uh, half an ounce to an ounce of ginger ale, otherwise it's gonna super water it down. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of carbonation, so I like to just do a little drop on top. Okay, so. Let's invite Miss Sienna Rose over and we will get this show started. Hello, hello, hello. Ah, the welcome that I love. Mm -hmm. Hey girl. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, I am feeling this 80s fantasy right now. Right, we're just two it. rebel girls. Right? Ooh. All right, so just in case we have anybody new watching, mm -hmm. where can everybody find you on social media? You can find me at Sienna Rose Official on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, the Venmo. Ding, ding, ding. I'm still working on the, the sound effects <laughs> here. Coming soon. And you can find me, Mrs. Anita Manager, on everything, including my website and YouTube. Oh, look at that. All right, so the Excelsior. This was one of your picks for the beverage. Uh huh. So this one actually looks really good. I'm not, okay. I have nothing to say about it, so I'm excited to try it with you. Okay, well, I'm not a rum girl or a um, ginger ale. I ginger ale. I hate it. Yeah. Ginger ale to me tastes like sickness. So when I saw it, I was laughing because I was like, you don't like either of know, these things, but, but you picked it. Because I like the name and I wanted to try something new. It's a whole night of trying things, new, trying some uh, new yes. things. So, uh, Cheers to new things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's really oh, you like good. It? Okay. Yeah. I waited. It doesn't, <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't have a very strong ginger ale taste. I really just did a little bit on top. Oh. Right? Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. It has more of a ginger flavor as opposed to a ginger ale flavor. Yes, I see that. Mm. Yeah, you know, this tastes like one of those little lollipops. It was like a, it was this color. It was like clearish yellow. It was like the little, the, the little lollipops, not like a blow pop. Like the Dum Dums? Yes. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. What is that flavor? That, like a butterscotch flavor? I don't know. It or, was... It was, you I know the one I'm talking about, yes. though, right? I yeah. think it had a that brown taste, label. think so. That it was tastes all white. just like this. Yeah. And if this is your first time tuning in, don't forget, our word of the night, every night, is thick. I use it frequently. And she just used it now. So <laughs> if you're drinking along, have a drink. So when you hear me use the TH word, you have a drink also. Mm -hmm. So, as Ellen already pointed out, Having all of your ingredients ready is called mise en place. Mise en place. So, place for everything. Exactly. So, I thought that the intro was a little bit longer, and I would have more time to cut everything up. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish this. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So tonight we're going to be making a Cornish pastry. Again, like I've said for the past three days, Great British Bake Off is my favorite show. Right. So, all of, I think all of the recipes this week come from the show. Mm -hmm. um, this is relatively similar to what we did yesterday. We're going to be making another shortcut crust pastry. Okay. Um, and then we're going to be layering it up. Tonight we have a fun twist, though. Ooh, what's the twist? Okay, so instead of one of us doing one thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like doing separate parts of it. Okay. I'm going to make the dough, and then we're each going to assemble our own. Oh. But the t fun twist of that is we have a lot of vegetarian and vegan viewers. We do. So tonight I'm making the uh, the one that has meat in it mm -hmm. and you're going to be making the vegetarian one. How fun. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is super, super simple. I know I say that all. Simple it doesn't shit. get easier than this. <laughs> Those are my catchphrases. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get easier than this. Right. But as you saw yesterday, short crust is super easy. Mm -hmm. It's equal parts butter, flour. Um, a little bit of water. And a little sometimes. bit of water. Um, but tonight we're going to be adding shortening. 
So the reason that we're going to be adding shortening is because there is very little to no fat in this. Okay. So That's great. Yeah. So actually, aside from that, there is no fat in this. Perfect. So it's just going to add a little bit of moisture to um, the one with the meat and also the one with the vegetarian part, uh, the vegetarian side, because there's no meat in it. So it's going to be a little bit drier. Gotcha. Cute. All right. Stand mixer. Mm-hmm. I have. So Great British Bake Off. Mm -hmm. Is filmed in Britain. Close enough. Okay, so it's in the UK. <laughs> well, um, yeah, okay. And fun fact, uh -huh. it's actually filmed on private property. I did know that. Right? Yes. Is that, I I never would have known, but um, so this recipe is actually done in grams. So I'm gonna roughly translate it. If you don't have a kitchen scale, get one. You can get one in under for under ten dollars on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, because you really want to be precise when it comes to baking and pastries, baking and blah, blah, blah. Right. Okay, so I have 250 grams of flour, which is roughly two cups. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So then I have 60 grams of butter and 60 grams of shortening. I'm going to give that a little whip. A whip. And at this point, what we're doing is we're just looking for it to break up and be a little bit like wet sand, pea-sized pieces. Okay. Um, again, I usually keep the butter and the lard and the flour in the refrigerator so it stays nice and cold. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, I forgot the water in the fridge. Ooh. Maybe you don't need it tonight. Maybe some, tonight is the night you can make a uh, short crust without water. Actually, this specific recipe called for the water. Well, I tried. So, <laughs> surprise. Okay. So my butter and my shortening have broken up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just gonna pour in half a cup of water. And as opposed to last night, I do want to make sure that I use all of it. Okay. Because even in the recipe that I found it very specifically said, not your typical short crust right. uh, <laughs> pastry. Okay, so I'm going to get my cling film ready. That's what they call it in the UK. A cling film? Cling film. You going to say with the accent? No, I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take off the beater attachment. Paddle. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I'm just going to work it into a ball before I dump it out. And I'm not really going to work it. Because are you gonna put it down, flip it, and reverse it? Exactly. Okay. Um, because it really, it just doesn't need it. There's nothing. There's no leavener in it. So mm -hmm. I'm just gonna make sure that it's all incorporated. Okay. That's the other one. Incorporated. Incorporated. Yep. We'll just have a list of words. You guys will just be drunk by the halfway <laughs> through point. Okay. Well, maybe you need to make some sip and simmer merch. Right. That's just a great idea. It doesn't get any. Maybe not put that on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't get any easier than this, and then just a picture of my face. That could work. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to seal this up with the cling film and put it in the refrigerator for at least two hours. Okay. All right. And because of beautiful TV magic, look at that. I have some done already. How does that look? All right. So I'm not going to torture you with rolling it out. Thank you. <laughs> So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flour my surface, mm -hmm. and we're going to start getting these rolled out. So, what you're going to do is you're going to cut your pastry in four before you even start, because this is already pre-measured. Mm -hmm. So, you need four even-sized round dough discs. Portions. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Words are not my thing to know. No. Okay, so I'm gonna flour this out. Okay. Okay. So, so what inspired your look today? Um, honestly, this wig came in the mail, and I was obsessed with the color gradation of it. Mm. It felt very like fiery, very '80s. And I was inspired by a picture of Ginger Minj that I saw. She has a picture of her in a mohawk and a very like similar color. And like, I've never tried anything like that. And so I hit her up and I said, hey, can you um, do that? And she said, yes. And so here we are. <laughs> what inspired your look? Um, 
So Futurama did not inspire this look, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, you asked me to style this wig and you told me to go wild. I did. So I went wild and this is what I came up with. It was meant for me and then I tried it on and I did not like it on me. She has a little head. I do. So it really, <laughs> it wasn't working. So I decided to wear it yeah. because I have a giant head. But I mean, it, it actually does work on you. Yeah, no, I'm happy with it. And I love this color. I am obsessed with this color. Mm -hmm. And I love that we are matching tonight. Right. I'm living for this, like, 80s girl group. Savage. Right? Mm -hmm. Can't go wrong with a little Fashion Nova. Mm -hmm. Right? This is from Fashion Nova? It is. I don't even know where I shop. You don't. <laughs> I just tell you there's a sale here, and you go, okay, and then packages show up at the house. <laughs> Shh, Aaron's watching. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna roll out all of these, thank you. Um, but don't move it too far because what I'm doing is I'm using the uh, cereal bowl As to measure, measure, measure so that way all of my discs are roughly the same, are right. exactly the same size. Mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to how thick it is, that you don't have to be very. Mm. I'm really happy with this drink. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I think from now on you should pick the drinks and I won't look at what they are okay. until the day of. Sounds good to me. So when we have a Malibu pineapple every night, don't say anything. <laughs> Girl, I didn't torture you with martinis every night. You don't get to do that to me. Well, I mean, if it's good, it's good. <laughs> and speaking of good, Adrian has a really good idea in the comment section. Uh, flame pattern kitchen towel merch, Anita. What do you Ooh, think about that? that would be cute. <laughs> And then maybe I could stop running out of kitchen towels. <laughs> I don't know what I do with them. I swear you to God. You throw them. I do. I do. You catch them it on fire and you throw them. Once. I have a fire not in the kitchen once and I can't live it down. Has anybody out there ever had a kitchen fire? Even if it was small like mine, it counts. Please make me feel like I'm not alone. I need to know how many of you have set something on fire in the kitchen. I don't necessarily burn food, but I'll burn things around me. Right. Okay, so I'm getting the fourth and final. Ooh, sorry. I'm getting the fourth and final one worked out. Okay. Um, what I'm doing is just flipping it back and forth, but as I flip it, I turn it a little bit clockwise so that way I uh, maintain the circle. Okay. Ish shape. Right. And then I just throw the bowl on top and give it a cut. It doesn't get. Much easier, easier than, than that. Okay, so I've got four done here. Okay. So why don't we go back to the recipe mm -hmm. and you walk us through um, assembling this one. Of so course. you're gonna do the vegetarian one. So okay. on the side there, you have a tray already ready for you. Look at that. Um, what you're gonna nice. do is you're just going to get a cookie sheet and you're gonna line it with parchment paper. Like so. Um, do you grease the underneath so it doesn't stick or? Um, so, typically I will grease underneath the uh, parchment paper just to hold it in place, mm -hmm. but this is a pretty heavy dish, so it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. All right. So Unless you want to show it to the camera that it slides off. I'm waiting for the day. I'm waiting for the day. You know, you're just putting that bad juju out there, and it's going to happen now. Because you don't need to show things to the camera like this. <laughs> well, how else are they going to see it in the chat room? Just a little, they'll tell, a little... So what we're gonna do mm -hmm. is you also have a glass bowl over there. I do. So this is the even easier part. Oh wow. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take all your ingredients and toss them in the bowl. Just like that. Just like that. Okay. All right, so the only thing that you're gonna exchange out of the recipe mm -hmm. is instead of it being X amount of meat, it's gonna be X amount of beans. Okay. So if you wanna just follow, you can just follow the recipe, read it along, and okay. tell us what you're doing. Sure. So, in our glass bowl right here, we are going to put in 125 grams of potato. So you want to be careful when you're measuring out the rest of the ingredients mm -hmm. because everything is different. Because there's different density to all of the different ingredients, mm -hmm. 100 grams of potato is not the same amount as 100 grams of onion because the potato is way more. Right. So it'll be less potatoes. So for this, I really strongly suggest you get a kitchen scale. Smart. Okay. 
And then with the potatoes, we're gonna put in 50 grams of celery. Make sure you get it all in there. We're gonna put in 50 grams of onion seed, of onion sliced. So for all of the veggies that are in here, mm -hmm. I mince all of it because okay. we're gonna be layering it in between this. So it's gonna kind of be like a short crust and veggie lasagna. Oh. So that's pretty much what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I just made sure that everything was small enough so that way you, with every bite, you'll get a little bit of everything. Oh, I love that. Cute, right? Mm hmm Okay, and then we're also gonna put in one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, which we have mixed in this little bowl right here. And Another then, addendum. Yes. I thought that it was a very boring recipe. Okay, so you added. It's another really, really old recipe. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I added, um, so it's a half a teaspoon of paprika, right? a half a teaspoon of oregano, mm -hmm. a half a teaspoon of parsley, mm -hmm. um, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, a few cracks of black pepper, and a sprinkling of salt. Ooh. Keep it cute. Like mm -hmm. And now instead of meat, we're going to add in our beans. Now, how much, how many beans, much beans? So that's about uh, 250 grams of beans. So the same amount of beef Exactly, in beans. exactly. Okay, we're gonna add those in, just like that. And Picked the wrong night to wear black. You did. And I'm just going to grab a spoon to stir. I gotcha. Look at you being prepared, thank you. So for this, you want to pay attention. When you strain, when you open your can of beans, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you let them fully drain in a colander or in a sieve because you really don't want a lot of moisture in this. If there's too much moisture, it's going to open up the pastry and it's not going to be as pretty as our finished product. Oh, okay. Okay, this looks all nice and mixed. Smells absolutely delicious. Now, also for this, I'm pretty sure. Oh, you can keep going. I'm not going to stop you. Okay. Um, I chose black beans because that's what we had in the pantry. Mm -hmm. I really think with this recipe, you can do any bean, and it would come out delicious. Personally, I think that a chickpea would be fantastic in this, mm. but you want to keep it on the meatier side. Like I wouldn't do. I don't know. I'm not a vegetarian. I have a lot of beans, but no. I wouldn't do a light <laughs> bean. Is there a light bean? I don't, I don't know. either. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so you want to make sure that it's hearty so that way you feel like you're getting enough food. Okay. That makes sense. Right? And so I watched you prepare the ones earlier, so I think I know what we're going to do next. All right. So so we have four layers of our short crust right here. We're going to yep. take one layer. We're going to put that down right on the center of your sheet, and we're going to divide our uh, filling into fourths, mm -hmm. and then we're going to spread all of our okay. Dough. One fourth of our mixing into the middle. Okay, so yep. you're right that that's how I did it earlier. Uh huh. But remember, at the end, I had that little bit of a panic attack. Uh huh. So you've got four layers of uh, pastry. Uh huh. You don't want four layers of the filling. Okay. Because four layers of the filling, then you end with the filling. Because if you're going to go pastry filling, pastry filling, pastry. Right. So you only want three layers of the uh -huh. filling. That's when I panicked at the end. Mm, okay. I was like, why is there an extra bowl? That makes sense. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm just gonna follow suit. I've got all of my veggies in the bowl. I've got all of my spices in the bowl. And for this, I'm using steak. This is the traditional way. Um, so it calls for 250 grams of steak. So I'm just gonna put that in my bowl. Okay. Beautiful, and I'm gonna mix mine up. And then I'm gonna copy you. Okay. So you want to make sure that you leave at least a half an inch around the perimeter so that way you can pinch it up. Because what we're going to do, if you've ever made a pie before, you know how you crimp the edges of a pie? Mm -hmm. So after we get all of the layers up, we're going to pinch the sides so that way it has a nice little finish. That's cute. Right? So I've got mine ready. Okay. And also, for those of you out there who are gluten-free, mm -hmm. um, you can make short crust with gluten-free flour. Oh, look at that. So you can make this a gluten-free vegan, 
uh, throw another dietary restriction out there. This is a super easy recipe to adapt at home to whatever you eat and whatever you like. Cute. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so once we have the first layer done, we're going to head and put the next pie crust. High crust? Short crust. Short crust layer right on top. Go ahead and you know give it a little pat so you don't get a huge mound. Right. You beat me to it. She's learning. I am so proud of her. Right. Look at me go. Okay. So I've got my first layer in. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna get this one on. You don't have to worry about sealing it at this very moment. I like to because it, I'm like sure that everything is gonna stay in there. Right. I I agree. Um, but I meant sealing it with like any egg or oh. water, um, because we are going to be finishing it with an egg wash. That is what makes it not vegan. Um, you could also use, uh, non-dairy milk if you want, um, as the glaze. Mm -hmm. I would suggest an oat milk so that way it, um, doesn't get like super soupy. Okay. Because oat milk is thicker than like a, uh, almond milk. So. Sure. And feel free as you're going to give it a little smash down. That's what I did with the first one and it came out perfect. I am so ready for this. And she's being so like ladylike and delicate and I'm just going right. in with my hands. Well, because, well, I don't like beans and bean juice all over my hands. I have no patience for I that. I know. All right, so while we're doing this, how about we play our game? Let's do it. All right, ready? So tonight we're going to be doing trivia. Okay. And it's going to be the LGBTQIA edition. I don't remember if it was that last time, but I love me some Ooh, gay trivia. Let's do it. Okay. So anybody that's out there that's paying attention, feel free to chime in and give us some answers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when was the first um, LGBT uh, march on Washington, D.C.? On Washington, D.C.? Yes. I don't know how good your, uh, I do know how poor your memory is. Thank you. But we did ask this question a few times at Truth. We did. During trivia. And so, I didn't pay attention because I was the one asking, so I knew the answers. Okay, so we have three options. Mm -hmm. Was it 1964? Okay. Was it 1965? Or was it 1966? Before you give your guess, does anybody in the chat room have a guess on what year it was or a factual response. Okay. Now, if I get this wrong, don't be mad at me. Know but your history, boo. I know. I'm not good with dates. I didn't do well in um, dating? History class. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean that too. <laughs> All right. I'm so going to go with. Oh, I don't know. I'm between two. I'm going to. They're only a year go. apart. Well, not the ones that I want. I don't want B. I don't want nineteen sixty-five. I'm gonna okay. go with nineteen sixty-six. Okay. Well, you're wrong. I have one. <laughs> the answer is B, nineteen sixty-five. Right. So your only option that you were <laughs> eliminating from the beginning. Okay. So the first march was in nineteen sixty-five, mm -hmm. um, and it was a lot bigger than a lot of people would have. Uh, assumed and it lasted a lot longer than people would have assumed. Oh, really? So I don't have all the information on hand, but make sure you know your history, especially for those LGBTQIA plus ding mm -hmm. people out there. Know your history. I'll look it up later. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to our next question. Because I'm doing so well. Okay, so this one this is a little heavy. Okay. I didn't pick the questions tonight. Oh. <laughs> So, this is a mess. again, know your history because a lot of things that we use today in our day-to-day -day lives mm -hmm. have been taken back from a negative place. Very true. All right. So what popular symbol of gay pride organizations uh, uh, originated, what, what popular symbol of gay pride originated mm -hmm. in Nazi concentration camps. This one, I know. So we have three options. Mm -hmm. We have A, a pink triangle. Mm -hmm. We have B, a pink star. Okay. And C, a purple square with a pink circle in the center. I am going to go with A, the pink triangle. Ding, ding, ding. Mm -hmm. Oh, we might have a, a toss up coming up after this. Oh. Okay. So, men convicted under the German law known as Paragraph 175 uh -huh. 
uh, were criminalized homosexuality, where homosexual, homosexuality was criminalized. They were forced to wear this symbol so that way they were easily identified. Mm -hmm. So the people who were Jewish had the Star of David, the gays had the triangle. Right. Okay, so we have one more. So this is gonna make or break you. I already feel pretty broken. Okay. <laughs> okay, so which national LGBT organization deals specifically with education issues? Is it P Flag? Is it HRC? Mm -hmm. Or is it Glisten? I'm gonna go with. Does anybody out there know? Give this girl some education. Mm. Again, I wanna go between two. Which is so making pick the me third think, right? <laughs> I'm gonna go. Hold on, let me think here. So HRC is a human rights campaign. P flag, I've actually never heard of before. Okay. We're gonna have a class tonight. Yeah. So I'm so, gonna go with. Wait, before you give your answer. Okay. okay. So aside from Aaron, as we know, is a huge nerd and he knows everything about everything. Yes. Um, I actually have a lot of knowledge on the LGBT community, aside from being a part of it. When I was in high school, um, I was the second president of the LGBT club, um, and I got national recognition from President Bush, <laughs> oh. no less. Um, and the club that I started, started in Stanford, which is a city, mm -hmm. and then it expanded to Greenwich, which is the next uh, town over, and then it expanded into Norwalk. So at that point, then it divided into three different high schools. Oh, wow. Fun fact, a decade after I graduated high school, mm -hmm. I went back to my school just to see how the club was doing, and it was no more. Wait, so what? I had a binder, a four-inch binder, filled with information that was no longer being used in the club because they integrated it into the history curriculum. You gotta work. Right? Yes. So that was really cool. I was mm -hmm. really proud of that. So now, um, anything that you learn in the uh, Stanford school system uh, about the LGBT history, uh, that was because of me. Oh, look at you, Kyle. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, getting back to it. Okay. Which national LGBT, LGBT organization deals specifically with educational issues? P flag, uh -huh. HRC, yep. or GLSEN? I'm gonna go with C GLSEN, um. and I'm wrong. <laughs> it's P flag. Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network. You are correct. Oh, wow! Look at me go. They aim to address issues as they arise on all levels of education. You so don't they listen. start from wee little babes mm -hmm. all the way up through college. Okay, so that was your fun little history lesson of the evening for you yes. and for you. Mm -hmm. What is P-Flag? Uh, P-Flag is it's a parent's organization, I believe, for uh, LGBT youth. Mm. I'm 99% sure that's what it is. I don't okay. remember offhand. Um, but before we go on, yes. I want to show you how I finished this. Mm -hmm. So what I did was, we've got all of our layers, we've got the four layers of the short crust, and then we have the three layers of the filling. And then all I did was I went around the edges, and I just pinched it the way that you would a pie crust. Then I'm going to take my egg wash, and I'm just going to paint over the whole thing. And you want to make sure that all of your layers are um, pinched together. And then you can just hit it with the egg wash and that'll help seal it so that way nothing spills out. And because nobody in this house is vegetarian or vegan, I'm going to continue the egg wash onto the vegetarian one. Um, but at home, like I said, you can always wash it with some sort of non-dairy milk um, or anything else that you've used in the past. If you've used anything to give a uh, pastry or a pie a glaze, mm -hmm. um, and you're a vegetarian or a vegan, please in the comments below let me know what you guys use at home so I can know for the future. Because then I could have it prepared and then we could all do it together the same way. That's cute. So P flag actually stands for mm -hmm. Parents and Friends of LGBTQ People. Oh. So I was right, it is okay. a parents. Okay, so this is going to go into the oven. Mm -hmm. For a while. It's going to go in for 50 to 55 minutes. Okay. At uh, 375 degrees? 350 50. degrees. Mm -hmm. um, so what you're going to be looking for is it's going to be a nice golden color and then you're going to have a nice sheen from the egg wash. 
So would you mind sliding that one down for me? Sure. The way it can I feel like it looks like one of those Uncrustables. It does. <laughs> right? <laughs> Okay, so before we say our adieu, oh, no. would you want to grab behind you the finished product so everybody can see what it looks like when it comes out of yes, the oven? Yes, let me do that. Ta-da! Look so at this. It look should look like a little mound. And golden and crispy and delicious. Okay, and while everybody is still here with me, mm -hmm. I want to say thank you for everybody being so patient with me getting the website and the YouTube up and running. Mm -hmm. I have not been posting the recipes afterwards um, for the past three days. Um, so, starting tomorrow, I will be posting the thank you with the link to the recipe on the YouTube page. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. So, um, if you would like to contribute to the production of Sip and Simmer, my Venmo is Mrs. Anita Manager, and I would also like to know um, if you want more LGBTQ trivia um, in the upcoming shows, if you want other trivia, mm -hmm. if you want me to ask her things on quantum physics so we no. know she won't answer and no. we get to see her think. Nope. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Mm -hmm. So, thank you guys for stopping in and having, hanging out with us in our kitchen. Thank you, Sienna. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Anita. Um, Sienna Rose official on all social media. That's right. Mrs. Anita Manager on all social media. Mm -hmm. I'm Anita Manager, and you guys are amazing. Bye. Bye, guys. Can I put this down? That's heavy. That's Thank really you. heavy. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. All right, so I'm going to get these that. in the oven. Oh.